my words to mathematical formula, I'd say it's the most perfect formula, one of the most perfect formulas you could write. God is not affected by man, man is affected by God, so have faith in God, not man. It's really good. And now we'll go back to regular programming. KSFO, Bob, fire away 30 seconds or less. Hi, Hi Michael. Yes, go ahead. Uh, listen, uh, one of the things I learned uh, early on is to, uh, when you're confronted with a lot of uh, variables, just, just go to Cui Bono. Uh, who benefits? And if you strip away all the pomp and circumstance, you got two men, Obama and the Pope. And they both have things they want to accomplish. One is in the United States, the Catholic Church has been losing a lot of attendance at the, ma at the masses. And uh, Obama has uh, a need for uh, more votes to support his liberal agenda. And what we have is a lot of people who want to come into the United States over the uh, southern border, mostly Hispanic uh, and uh, therefore Catholic. And, uh, he's and by the way, uneducated by and large, very, very uneducated by and large, and semi-literate in many cases, they're perfect for both of those leaders that you mentioned. Uh, and by the way, when I, when I said this two years ago, do you know who attacked me? The Catholic League jumped down my throat saying, Doc, Michael Savage had the nerve to say that the reason uh, we're in favor of illegal immigration is to fill the empty pews. They ripped me to shreds over that. But, Bob, I see it that way. It's all about business, isn't it? It's strip it down. The Catholics get parishioners and more money because those parishioners are worth more in the United States than they are over the border. And the yep, you're right. Liberals. That's right. And the Democrats get more voters. And we get government zero. And you stay in the line, I'm sending you a copy of government zero when it comes out next week. At least it'll be available. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. You think this church, the Catholic Church, is not going to have a some kind of upheaval over this pope? I do. I'll make a prediction right now on this program that there, I know there's a revolution brewing a counter-revolution against this Pope's Marxism. I know it for a fact because I've studied this. It's in my book. Yes, I have to say it is. Yes, I refer to the book because if it's not me referring to the book, who is Fox News? Rush Limbaugh is going to mention my book? No, I'm not part of the Rush cartel. Nobody will mention my book but me. So I'm telling you, I've studied this. And the fact of the matter is it's 100% true. The conservative bishops who opposed the, the left-leaning or Marxism of this Pope were thrown down the ladder. They were pushed out. And they're right now fomenting a rebellion against Francis's left-wing uh, preachings. Did you know that? Does anyone know that out there? KSFO, Claire, you may be more knowledgeable than I am. Go ahead, please. Okay, I'll tell you. Yes, we do know that. Uh, there's a lot of us traditional Catholics that are outraged by this Lindus Pope. I thank you for your message. You're acting like the shepherd of the flock that our bishops aren't even doing. I am right now standing in front of a Planned Parenthood clinic with my signs about selling baby body parts. Where are the priests and nuns and the bishops to stand by my side? They're nowhere to be found. And I'm telling you, we get what you're saying. You're exactly right. Some cardinals are t talking about maybe schism coming or schism with the German church with all their transgender and communion for gay and the whole thing. So we get it, and there's a, uh, maybe a minority of us, but I, if the church splits... Claire, Claire what, organiza what organization are you with within the Catholic Church? Well, actually, I sing Gregorian chant for the Latin high mass. So I actually sing for the traditional Latin mass, but I also do all sorts of other things with the church as well. I protest at the clinic and, and all sorts of things. You know, Catholic, I'm Catholic. Claire, I hope you tell your friends what you just said. And I'm going to send you my book. I'm not going to mention the name again. I just want you to have a copy. It'll be out for you next week in the, in the, st in the bookstores of the month. This is the biggest story in that book. I had no idea how big this would become. I knew the Pope was coming. And I knew by his writings who he was. It's not like something new to me. I knew his encyclicals and who, who wrote them. I mean, I told you about it yesterday. Again, at the risk of your displeasure, I'll just give you one, one sentence, not one page. In, in the chapter on Lenin's Pope, I talk about who wrote his environmental encyclical. The Pope did not write it. He is like a president or a politician. Do you understand? They have speechwriters. Do you get that part of it? All important men have speechwriters, including popes. I know many of you think it's the word of God that he's speaking because he speaks in another language or he speaks slowly. 
But what he is saying <coughs> is actually written for him by others. And the speech on the environment was, was written for him by a very, very well-known non-believer in God. And uh, not only a non-believer in God, but a non-believer in, uh, in, in, in the teachings of, of his own church. He's a practitioner of Gaia. And the Pope basically reads what he writes. His name is in here. And uh, do you want me to read about it to you? you want to hear it again? Are you open to listening to any of it? I don't know. I think most people who are not listening to what I'm saying aren't going to hear a word I say. If I tell you the man's name, the German man, and I tell you that he's a practitioner of a paganism and that the Pope is just reading what he wrote, are you going to listen to me? Are you going to believe a word I say? You'll say I made it up. I heard that yesterday. The Pope knows nothing about climate science. The Pope knows less about climate science than he does about economics. He knows nothing about economics. Was he ever in business? Does that stop him, though, from rendering his utterly valueless opinions? In the absence of any actual scientific understanding of climate or the environment, he just repeats liberal talking points, putting a religious spin on them? And who wrote it for him? Would you like to know? Well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to read the man's name again. I'm not going to talk about it again. I'm not going to talk about it because you're going to read it for yourself when the book comes out. And you'll have plenty of time when it does come out for me to talk about how he's channeling Lenin and who it was who wrote this uh, encyclical on the environment for him because there's a name, an actual name. And the man is a great friend of uh, the environmental movement here in America. They have exactly the same viewpoint. Now, we've all learned the hard way how lethal communism is. Over 100 million people died under the communist hammer and sickle in the last century. China paid an even bigger price in human life than Russia, where full communism was abandoned earlier. But every country that has tried communism has had the same results. Even Vladimir Putin admits it was a mistake. But that apparently message, that message didn't make it to the Vatican. He is espousing economic policies identical to that of Karl Marx. Redistribute wealth, class warfare, production is wrong, distribution is wrong. Everything faulty about Karl Marx's economic ideas, because remember, Karl Marx was a stupid college teacher, very much like most of the idiots who espouse Marxism today on full tenure. Stupid. They couldn't run a falafel stand. They couldn't open a yogurt shop and make it work. They couldn't open a coffee shop or a bookstore and make it work. But they're experts in economics. It's like many friends I had when I was young, when I had my children, uh, first had my children. They were not married themselves. Some of them were even gay and very nice people, but they were experts on child rearing. Every one of them was an expert on how to raise a child, but they had no children. That's like the Pope on the environment. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The mass hysteria, the hypocrisy, the vanity. It's unbelievable to me to watch this. And it's a nation, it's a, we're a secular nation. And to see this media turn itself into an arm of the Roman Catholic Church is, I, I don't know, it says something to me. It's going to take me a while to understand this. It's around the clock, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, as though the entire nation uh, is filled with Roman Catholics when the majority of the nation is Christian and the majority the majority is Protestant. What is this? Is this not somewhat unsettling? Something is wrong. Something big is wrong when all of the maimans in the media... The, the, the literal, you think the media is run by people who love Christianity? You know that that's not true. You know that those in the media generally are atheistic. They laugh at, they scoff at God, they scoff at the Ten Commandments. So why are they worshiping this Pope? Because he's basically eschewed the fundamentalism of, of Catholicism. That's what he's done. In simple terms, he has thrown away all the traditions of Catholicism and opened up the door to liberalism in the church. And so that's why he's being welcomed with open cameras. Well, my friends, I've done the best I can. I hope I've done God's work. This is Michael Savage. And all I can say is let's pray that Monday is a better day than is Friday.